how can this offense what, what look different, be any different? He called different plays with, with Grayson as quarterback, suppose where you were last year. You know, from a scheme standpoint, we haven't changed a ton from what we were doing last year. Uh, you know, obviously every year you kind of tailor it towards uh, who you have. And, uh, you know, obviously Grayson's our starting quarterback right now, but not just him, it's everybody. Uh, try to take things from your package that those guys do good and, uh, you know, again, tailor it around that, that your personnel that to that extent. But anyway, it, it, we're going to play – pretty much the same type of scheme we did last year. Steve, two years ago, you guys um, kind of fluctuated back and forth with quarterbacks. Last year, there seemed to be a concerted effort to start David every week. Do you expect the same thing with, with Grayson this year, you know, performance? Yeah, I would. And, and, you know, again, getting back to last year, I, you know, David coming out of spring ball was, uh, we felt as a coaching staff, our best chance to win. And, uh and again, we didn't play well enough at the quarterback spot last year, so we went into the spring, um, you know, opening it up and making it a competition. And now coming out, you know, Grayson just had a tremendous off season, and you know, clearly he's, you know, he's the starting quarterback. Do you have any packages that you anticipate using David in? Yeah, we do. You know, we're D David's good athlete, and obviously can run, and and there's some things he brings to the table. So we are. Uh, taking a look at that, and as we get closer to UCLA, you know, you can plug in, you know, a little more of the specifics. But uh, that that is on the table right now. Uh, Steve, Mike mentioned the uh, receiver group last night as being particularly wide open. The competition there. What have you seen from them, and, and would it be better to have a little more separation at this point, or are you comfortable kind of with the? the you know, derby? they've been the biggest surprise, I think. Uh, you know, this spring and going into fall camp and so far with the first five days, that's probably where we are most improved, uh, that area, as you look at last year. And, and you know, you always want a, a dominant go-to number one guy, but uh, I like the competition. I like the numbers we have. We've got depth, uh, you know, and, and anytime you have that type of competition and depth, then, the, you know, they're working harder at practice because – uh, you know, there's only so many reps, so it's that, that's it's a good group. I think they'll continue to improve. There there are some young guys in there. Um, I'm very impressed with our two true freshmen, uh, and they they'll they'll play. Uh, so I, again, I think that's a it's an area that uh, has improved quite a bit for us. Steve J. Whitmire's injury <clears throat> seems to have created a little bit of a bind for you. A tackle, assess if you would where you are on the left and right side, and if you were to play UCLA tomorrow, who would line up there? Well, uh, you know, I, I don't think we've settled on anything in, in, in reference to the UCLA game. We're going to try, like always, to get our best five on the field. Uh, you know, Jay was a tackle, uh, and we are a little bit uh, thin in terms of tackle body types. So, uh, you know, that did hurt us to some degree. But we've got some guys there. We've got four guys working with the, you know, ones and twos. And, uh, you know, we've made a couple of switches already in the first five days. But, uh, you know, we'll, we'll find two guys to play. How about the offensive line as a whole? And first of all, you said Jay was a tackle. I assume there's a chance he will return. Yeah, you know, it, I, I don't know. There's a possibility. Uh, but, you know, right now it's going to be down the road. So, um, you know, we're going to enter the season without him being active and ready to roll. Uh, the offensive line, obviously, we lost two very good players. Uh, them, like everybody, we've got to improve on last year's performance. Uh, we're going to be young there, and that's probably as critical to our success as anything is how far we can get those guys to progress. Uh, they did a nice job in spring ball. Uh, you know, today's our first full padded practice. Uh, and, and we've got to make some strides. But I, I like the way they're working, uh, you know, and, and we certainly have some ability there, young in some spots. Steve, just a, a kind of a two-part question. Uh, what do you expect out of Kevin Parks this year? And um, are we going to see a different smoke now that he is 100%? And do you, do you expect him to be what you hoped he would be last year? Yeah, the, Kevin, if we could get another year like last year, I'd be real pleased. You know, he, he was a – very productive back for us, uh, and then off the field, just his leadership and his presence is uh, good for our football team. Uh, you know, he went over a thousand yards, and he's capable of doing that again for us. So, uh, really like 
having Kevin back, I think uh, our entire offense kind of feeds off him a little bit. Smoke is, you know, very talented young man. Like anybody, he came out of high school last year. He's flashed early. Uh, certainly has a ton of ability. Um, you know, got dinged a little bit, and that that kind of slowed his progression. But he's been tremendous in the spring, and, and very dynamic player. And, and we're expecting very, very good things out of out of him. Steve, uh, <clears throat> over here. You, you've been a head coach before, a head coach on the on the hot seat. I wondered if you had any advice for Mike and how he deals with this, and 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 just how a head coach has to navigate through that when you know there's outside people maybe speculating about things. Yeah, you know, it, first of all, I, I love Mike London. I, 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 you know, I've been doing this 32 years. I'm not sure I've been around a a guy that cares more about kids and is in it for the right reasons. And you know, he 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 just really makes coming to work a not just a pleasant thing but a meaningful thing and can't say enough about him you know today you know whether it be college or the NFL I mean head coach or assistant coach I mean every seat's hot I mean it's uh it's just the way it is nowadays you know and um like I said I've been doing this 32 years and it seems like every year it gets uh you know people want results faster a little more impatient you know they, they talk about some of the you know really successful coaches from 30 years ago that wouldn't have been successful because they didn't give them enough time. So it's just the, it's just the nature of it, you know. And, uh, you know, Mike's grounded enough to, to know the task at hand and, and, and none of it's affecting him. And uh, like I said, we look forward to this year. We'll be better and, you know, we just got to get going here. Uh, coach, um, uh, uh, productivity in the red zone is so important for any football team, obviously. Uh, Jake McGee was a very valuable weapon as a red zone in addition to what else he could do. Uh, maybe who steps up uh, and, and can maybe fill that role and, and, and help with the red zone productivity? You know, in, 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 I'm going to answer that just not in reference to the red zone, but I agree with you. You know, uh, you know, Jake was a big target and could be effective there. That that has probably been as good a surprise like the receivers as as we've had. Uh, you know, Kyle Dawkins, Kanan Severin, some guys like that that are very good sized receivers have really stepped up and. Uh, you know, we're excited about what they can do. So uh, I think, uh, you know, I like Jake. He's a good person. You know, Jake did what he had to do. But uh, we'll move on, and I think we've got some real uh, viable replacements. Steve, you guys were among the top ten in the nation in, in time of possession last year. I'm curious, in this day and age, if, if that even matters anymore, if that's a consideration, if that's considered something of a badge of honor, even if the uh, – <laughs> even if the uh, – you know, the results weren't what you wanted. You know, possessing the ball is a good thing. There's no question. You know, both in, in uh, time of possession and number of plays run, which we were, you know, we seem to be able to do. Um, you know, our lack of productivity kind of speaks to our, you know, we had the ball. We just couldn't get it in the end zone. We just couldn't create big plays. And that's just who we were last year. And obviously those are things, those explosive type plays uh, and scoring plays in the red zone we've got to improve on. But uh, getting back to time of possession, we'd love to do that again. I mean, we'd love to, you know, come out of a game with a lot more time of possession and a lot more plays than our opponents have. Coach, uh, tight ends, you haven't addressed that yet. Uh, Burns, Swanson, English, talk about what's going on there. Uh, we've gotten more physical. You know, I, I think Tom's done a good job of, uh, you know, stressing the offseason weight room conditioning program and, and the, the fact that we've got to be able to put our hand on the ground at that position and block a defensive end. Uh, we feel like we've made some strides there. Uh, Zach Swanson is looks real good. You know, I mean, he's he's put on weight, added strength, but he's he's uh, in some ways he's moving better uh, and made a tremendous catch in a live drill or not a live drill, but a a team drill last night. And uh, expect him to have a very good year. Uh, Burns behind him is you know coming on uh, again, added strength, uh, and we're real pleased. To, you know, Jack English. We're kind of figuring out what we've got there, and we've got a true freshman, Evan Butts, that came in that we think is going to be a very good player. So, uh, you know, it's like anything else. Just the more we can recruit well and get depth and develop it, then you know we'll get this where we need to be. What can you do to it to kind of address? scoring after getting takeaways last year was a bit of an issue only 13 well, points you know i don't even look at it like that it did takeaways or not we got to score more you know we didn't score uh you know whether we got it on a takeaway or got it from a kickoff or however we got the ball we got to we got to find a way to get it in the end zone more than we did but 
again, I think if, if from the explosive part of our offense, uh, if we can get a little bit better in that area, I think that's going to help. And, you know, we just very inconsistent last year. And a lot of it's our own doing. It's, it's amazing how many games you can be in and give yourself a chance to win if you don't screw it up. And we played very uh, good examples BYU. We played very poorly uh, in a lot of ways offensively, but we didn't lose the game. Uh, you know, and then all of a sudden at the end, you got a chance to win it, and you do. And that's what we've got to do. We got to, you know, we've got to eliminate the penalties, eliminate the turnovers, the you know, the things snapping the ball over the guy's head, just things that we did to shoot ourselves in the foot. That's that's probably the starting point. And then, if, like I said, if we can get a little more explosive with the fact that smoke's back and some of the receivers are coming on, uh, that will help us as well. Darius Jennings didn't have a monster year last year, but has over 100 career receptions. Where do you see him now coming into the season? I think we know, I, at least I do, I know a little more about him and what he does. Uh, you know, he's, he's got speed and change of direction. Uh, you know, and we just got to use him doing the routes and the things that he does well. Uh, you know, he's, he's in the rotation right now. He's, you know, uh, playing the flanker position. And, uh, you know, like I said, it's, I've, I've got a better feel for it. He's got a better feel for what we're doing. And, uh, you know, has a chance. He's, again, like Smoke, because of the speed, has a chance to help us in the, the explosive category. You kind of just touched on, you know, Smoke and the explosive plays, but looking at the rest of the roster, are big plays something that you're going to have to scheme up, or, or do you feel like there are guys there that can take a routine play and turn it big? Yeah, a little, a little of both. I mean, obviously, you, you, you pick and choose shot type plays and, uh, you know, reverse type plays when you feel like they're over pursuing. And, and some of those type are obviously hit or miss. I mean, when you, when you hit them, they, they're going to give you an explosive. And when you, you don't, you don't. And, um, you know, that, that part has got to be something that we, we make sure we get done. But the players, too. You know, I mean, Spoke is an example. Darius is an example. Some of the receivers, uh, you know, that we've got are moving a little bit better. And Kalik Shepard goes into that category. And, and guys that just, you know, if we can get them the ball in space, have a chance to maybe make a tackle, miss, and get the ball down the field a little bit for us. Steve, you talked about the just the tremendous offseason that Grayson had. What, <clears throat> to someone who watched him, last watched him live or outside of a practice in that Virginia Tech game to now, what's the difference in him as a quarterback, as a leader? How would you describe it to a casual uh, fan? You know, across the board, number one, you know, he's, he's bigger, he's stronger. Uh, he's faster, you know. He had a tremendous off season that way. Uh, you know, Grayson, Grayson was is a very talented uh, quarterback. You know, he can make every throw. He's a big, strong guy. But uh, you know, when when we got him last spring and into last August, he was in no way, shape, or form ready to play. Just uh, you know, the the college game. He came from such a basic offense in high school. He was just learning coverages and how to call a play, but he is a very hard working guy. Uh, it, it's very, very important to him. And, and he, you know, since I've been here, he's just studied and, and wanted more and more and more. And, you know, you could see last January when, when they came back to school, he was, you know, in his mind, he was going to be the starting quarterback and it was going to be a no brainer. And um, so I guess if you go out and watch him now, he's a lot more consistent. You'll see him making more plays, throwing the football. You'll see him command of the offense, uh, you know, in that respect. He, you know, he's, he's quicker in making decisions because he's, you know, just played a little bit and he kind of has a better feel for it. Coach, could you talk about, we, we've talked earlier with, with Coach London about the increasing comfort and familiarity the players have with what they're being asked to do now in year two with the different schematic approaches with, with the uh, coordinators. Could you talk about the, the comfort and familiarity you guys have with each other in terms of game planning and execution on game day and how that can play a role? I think, you know, it doesn't matter how good a coaching staff you have if you've worked together for a year it's it's going to be better and uh you know just the the interaction between our offensive staff and our staff in general is you know obviously a year better so um and i think you know you i'm, I'm not sure if you asked this in the question but you know we know our players better and you can say what you want but f you know when you get hired on and you you only have 15 practices in spring ball and then show up in august and kind of try to mold something you don't know them as well as you do as if you've gone through a season like we have so you know just getting guys like Kyle Dawkins not only you know uh, you know wasn't even in our thoughts last year now he's in our thoughts and we know who he is and he's playing in the slot rather than outside and those type of things uh, you know that's what a season can do for you 
I think last year you talking about Kevin, and you said if everybody had kind of his heart, you'd have a hell of a football team. Do you see that rub off on other players? Uh, you you know, do, and, that, and you'd like it to rub off more than – I mean, it has, but you want more. You know, I think, if, again, if everybody had that type of approach to the game, you know, I don't I, throw out the window, size, height, all that stuff. I mean, guys that, you know, are just genuinely tough, love to play, play for each other. They're not selfish. Uh, you know, Kevin Kevin doesn't care who gets the ball in the end zone. He'll block a defensive end if he has to. I mean, that's just the way he is. And uh, they're fun to coach. They're fun to be around. They make other players better. And the more that you can have, the better off you are. How much have you looked at UCLA? You know, we did a <clears> – <throat> I know I, I'm not sure what our defense did. We we only did the first two, typically uh, you know after spring ball and before the the summer camp uh, session. We've got some time in there, and we we broke down our first two opponents. Uh, so we looked at every game. We we broke it down. We've got it in the computer. We've got the cut ups run. We've looked at it. I wouldn't say I've studied it all summer. I'm more interested in getting our guys, the right guys, on the field at the right spots, doing the right things. Uh, but we are, you know, we're we're aware of what UCL is, UCLA is defensively. We know structurally what they do. We know where their personnel is, where their strengths are. Uh, and after pre we get through this next week, we'll start gearing some of the things we do towards them. <clears throat> last question here from Hank. Steve, obviously, last year was was difficult for for kind of everybody, um, and then. I guess when, when Jake left, um, I know there were a lot of players that were kind of ticked off about it and, and, and that kind of thing. Has that maybe the sense that he was jumping off a sinking ship or whatever, has that been, a, you, you're talking about all these receivers that are kind of rising up and, and making it a very competitive thing. Has that been a rallying point for the team, do you think? Yeah, I really don't. Uh, I just think they, you know, we've gotten a year better there and, uh, you know, we've added some parts now with these freshmen coming in. Uh, you know, I, I don't know why Jake did what Jake wanted. I mean, that's his business. And, you know, when he decided to do it, you just wish him good luck and move on. But like I said, we, we knew, and, and this was after spring ball, we knew coming out of spring ball, you know, what we had and felt very, very good uh, with where we were headed uh, in, in that inside receiver spot.